Modes help us create different moods and atmospheres in our music. In the previous three videos, we talked about the basics of modes and used mode scales over a drone backing track to really get a sense of how each mode sounds. And in this video, we're going to get even more into the sound of each mode by bringing our knowledge of chords into this equation. So there are many chord progressions for each mode. In fact, too many to cover in one lesson, but by the end of this lesson, I hope to give you an example chord progression for each mode, and also offer you a few guiding principles that will help you come up with your own chord progressions within modes. And I also recommend watching my uh, Zelda mode series, because that is about this subject and has some useful examples for each mode. And if you like the music of Zelda, as I do, um, there's just cool, cool pieces of music to use as examples. So. What does it mean to compose a chord progression in a mode anyway? What are we trying to do here? It's a good question. Basically what we're looking for is we want to take the chords in a key and arrange them in an order that brings out the sound of one of that key's modes. For instance, if we're in the key of C, we might want to change the vibe to feel like we're playing in the D Dorian mode, which is the second mode in the key of C, instead of, let's say, C Ionian. So we want to write a chord progression that makes everything sound like D Dorian. And then you might ask, well, how do you know if it sounds like D Dorian? Well, if you look at the triads in the key of C here, you'll notice the second chord is a D minor. And the way you'll know if you're in D Dorian is if your chord progression wants to resolve to that D minor chord as its home base instead of to a C major chord, even though we're in the key of C. So since Dorian is the second mode and we're in the key of C, we want, in order to know we're in Dorian, we want to be resolving to that second chord, D Dorian. So here are two examples in the key of C. I'm going to play a chord progression that's in I C Ionian, which resolves to C. Then I'm going to play a chord progression that's still in the key of C, but resolves to a D minor chord because it's in D Dorian. So here's C Ionian. We're going to play C, F, G, and C. Super resolved to that C. Now, what if we play a Dorian, D Dorian chord progression? It should resolve to the D minor chord, even though we're still in the key of C. So I'm going to play this progression here, which is D minor, E minor, C, D minor. And we'll see if that resolves. <laughs> now it sounds like we've resolved pretty nicely to that D minor chord, even though we're still in the key of C. C doesn't sound like home bass anymore. D minor sounds like home bass. And when that is true, then you are definitely in D Dorian. So for all the different modes, you want to find chord progressions that gets you to feel resolved and completely you know, the chord progression is just, it'd be fine if it ended there, um, using the chord that is the root chord of whatever mode you're on. So if you're resolving to Lydian, Lydian's the fourth mode, so you want your chord progressions to resolve to the fourth chord in the key. In this case, F Lydian would resolve to an F major, D Dorian resolves to D minor, and so on. So you can think of modes as the process through which we make different notes in the key sound like home bass or the tonal center. In this case, we're talking about making D the tonal center even though we're in C. All right, there are a lot of ways to make D minor sound like home bass, and there's lots of different chord progressions that could achieve that. Uh, so, you know, every mode's got all kinds of ways to bring out the mode, but one very reliable strategy for composing progressions in a mode is to start your progression on the root of that mode. So, you know, in D Dorian's case, that's a D minor and then play its two neighboring chords in the progression. Um, so in the D Dorian example, that means going from D minor, and then its neighbor, meaning the next chord over in the key, would be E minor. And 
This other neighbor, if you knock knock on the door down the street, is C major. So D minor is just one step in the key away from C major and one step in the key away from E minor. So we're going to use those chords in our progression because it just so happens that that really helps you bring out the mode that you're in. So here we go. We're going to take our D minor chord. Now we're moving up to its neighbor E minor, then down to its neighbor C, and then back to D minor. And that's one way to get a good Dorian progression is minor, up to minor, down to major, back to minor. That's D Dorian. So let's do that for all the modes in the key of C as examples for how we can get each mode's progression uh, under our belt, or an example of progression for each mode, I should say. So let's start with C Ionian. We don't want to leave that guy behind just because C Ionian, you know, Ionian is the easiest mode to make things sound like because everything wants to resolve back to the tonal center of the key. But it doesn't always, and that's what modes are. So we've got C, and we're going to go up to its neighbor, D minor, and then down to its other neighbor, B diminished, and that will be our example chord progression for C Ionian. Sounds like home bass to me. So now let's do this for, we did D Dorian, let's skip over to E Phrygian. So I'm going to have to play a few chords to kind of reset your ears because I don't want you to feel like you just heard an Ionian progression and then I'm going to show you this Phrygian progression. You're still going to be hearing Ionian, which will change the way that the Phrygian progression kind of feels to you. Context is very important with mode chord progressions. So I'm going to play a few chords just to cleanse our oral palate. So. All right. Now, your ears should be set sort of in the key of B major or whatever, and we're going to go back into C, we're going to do E Phrygian. So, for E Phrygian, we'll start on our E minor chord, the third chord in the key of C, and we're going to go up to its neighbor, F major, down to its neighbor, D minor, and back to E minor, and that will be our example for an E Phrygian chord progression. So it sounds pretty resolved there. To get it even more resolved, just a trick is if you use just fifths or power chords, it's just a very uh, strong resolution. In the case of Phrygian. Um, so there's an example for E Phrygian. We're going to go minor, up a half step to major, down to minor, and then up a whole step back to our first minor chord for Phrygian. Okay, so now we're going to move on to F Lydian. I'm going to reset your ear balls again. Okay, cool. So um, if you didn't just stop the video because of that terrible wanking, then you'll be ready now to hear F Lydian. So let's take our F major chord because. F Lydian is going to start on an F major chord and we're going to move up to its neighbor G major down to its neighbor E minor back to F. So here we go. So that sounded nice and resolved to that F, and you'll notice that I had to go down an octave to really get it to stick, and that's because, like I was saying, context is a huge part of what makes a mode progression really sound like the mode it's in, and going all the way down and slowing down the tempo really made it want to resolve there, and it works very nicely there. Um, so we have major going up a whole step to major. And then we had a minor chord back to our original F major there. That was for F Lydian. Now I'm going to reset your ears. All right, and we're going to do G Mixolydian. So the fifth mode of the key of C 
is G mixolydian. We're going to start on a G major chord, which is the five chord. And then we're going to go up to its neighbor, A minor, down to its neighbor, F, and then back to G. So we got... So that's a nice mixolydian sound. Okay, so it's major, a whole step to minor, and then we're going to go to its major neighbor and back to our original G major chord. And then we're going to switch over now to A Aeolian, the sixth mode. I gotta cleanse your palate again. Alright, let's do a Aeolian. We got an A minor chord, which is the sixth chord in the key of C, and we're in the sixth mode. Then we're going up to its neighbor B diminished, down to its neighbor G, and back to A minor. resolution there. And finally, for B Locrian, since B Locrian is going to start on a B diminished chord, and B diminished is an inherently unresolved sounding chord, it's going to be hard to make a chord progression that resolves cleanly to Locrian. So we're in this situation here where we've got, um, we've got this concept, and it doesn't really work that well for B diminished, because if I take a B diminished chord and I play its neighbors up to C, then down to A minor and then back, it sounds like it wants to go back to C, at least to my ear. It's like... That's what it wants to do for me. Um, and so my solution for staying in Locrian, a good chord progression to stay in Locrian, is actually you stay on B diminished, and then you just play different inversions of B diminished, and then melody in between. So it's it's really more like a one chord vamp for Locrian. I'll be like... sort of never wants to end because uh, it's just a very unresolved sound. Not that it's unuseful or something. It's, you know, it is useful. Uh, it's just trickier because it's unresolved. So let's take these examples that we just did in C major and turn them into formulas for how you can take these chord progressions, think about them, and bring them into any other key, not just in C major. So we're going to use Roman numeral notation to identify what each of these chords are, and then you can plug in um, whatever new key you want to do. So for example, for our C Ionian progression, we had one major going to two minor, going to seven diminished into one. C is the one chord, D minor is the two minor chord, B diminished is the seven diminished chord, the C major this is all in the key of C. But if we wanted to move it to like A major, we'd want to still go from the one chord to the two minor chord down to the seven diminished chord, but now instead of one being C, two being D, seven being B, one is going to be A, two, is gonna, two minor is going to be B minor, and then our seven diminished will be G sharp diminished. So one, A, two, B minor, seven diminished, G sharp diminished, A, one. And so here are the formulas uh, in Roman numerals for each of those progressions that we've gone over today. And what I'd like you to do is pick a key beside C. Well, actually first, learn all the progressions and memorize them as I've shown you in the key of C. And then pick a key beside C, um, pick a mode within that key, and plug chords from that key appropriately into um, the, the Roman numeral progressions written for that mode. So. For example, if we're switching to the key of A major, and we're going to do the Lydian mode, 
it sa says here that we have to take the four chord, the five chord, and then the three minor chord back to the four chord, and that's our progression. So we're going to think, all right, well we're in we're in A major and we're doing Lydian. So we want to since Lydian is the fourth mode, we want to start on the fourth chord of A major. So the four chord in A major is D major, and then we're going to want to go up to the five chord in a major, which is going to be E major, and then we're going to go to the three minor chord in A major, which is C sharp minor, and then back home base, D major, and so then you're in D Lydian now, in the key of A, as opposed to F Lydian in the key of C. So this is useful stuff. And in the next half of this um, chunk of music theory from the ground up, I'm going to show you one more useful harmonic technique for bringing out the sound of each mode, but here's a good starting point.